In this demo, I'm going to be having a look at part two for your network architecture or NWAR 511-5122 module for 2024. Looking at my POE document, there's my part two. Network architecture is a logical and structural layout of the network, including how devices are connected and the rules that govern data transfer between them. It also refers to how network services and devices are structured to meet the connectivity needs of client services. In part one, you identified network components, technologies, and services. For example, what did we identify? Switches, routers, cables, different types of devices that we're going to be using. In part one, you identify the components, technologies, and services that can be used for the library and multimedia technology center project. In part two, you will be focusing on planning and designing the solution for this network. Complete the following activities. So there's five activities. In this demo, we're going to do the first four activities, and then I'll do a separate uh, demo for the last activity. So activity one now is saying, describe in detail the network architecture of the solution below. In your description, outline what each architecture will involve. Remember that besides discussing these networking concepts, you need to also link it towards the case study. So the two concepts that they are speaking about that are five marks each year is client server networking versus directory services networking. Where will I find this information? I go to my learning unit. I go to my learning unit. And from the learning unit, I'm going to now look at where is it talking about network architectures. In learning unit four, it is talking about network architectures. So from learning unit four, now I can see there's client server type of network architectures. And they've got some recommended readings that I can go and have a look at here. I'm going to click on theme two, which speaks about network architectures. And there I can see those terms that were mentioned in the part two. This is talking about client server and directory services network. I'm then going to have a look at the videos that they have here. This client server peer to peer networking and then working with active directory. And then I can further see that this is covered in chapter four of my textbook. I will go then to the lecture slides here and I will open up chapter four. If I go to more resources and I go to um, lecture slides, I will then click on chapter four slides. And if I open up chapter four slides, I can see I'll scroll down and I can see there's client server, there's directory services. And I continue to scroll down. There's different types of servers. Remember, in the case study, they're going to ask us to talk about different types of servers as well. So I'm going to scroll through, and I'm going to keep having a look at now what is an enterprise network, peer-to-peer -peer network, the benefits. I'll just scroll through now because I'm looking for what? Client server and directory services. So there I get to client services, and then it gives me a description of what client services network is all about. It gives me a, a diagram. In the diagram, I can see there's my client. They're connected to a switch, and the switch is connecting it to the server. So these clients are connected to the server. Some more features and characteristics is given to me about client server networks. Advantages and disadvantages are given to me about client services network. Remember, I'm going to base my answer on this information, which is the prescribed material. I'm going to put it into my own words 
And if I find additional resources on learn, I will use those additional resources and reference them correctly. How, when to choose a client services network. And then there's an, another example here. So I continue, single server network. Now remember, a single server network might be appropriate for this scenario that we are using, which is the multimedia center. But we need to make a decision now, is it the best one or must we have a directory services based network? So there's your client server. You can have multiple servers. This will be for larger networks. Can you see in this example, They've given us, there's all the clients here, but we've got separate print server, separate file server, separate email server. In the scenario, they spoke about, we need to have internet access. We need to have a uh, library. In the library, we're going to have what? A print server. And this print server is going to be connected to multifunctional devices that's going to allow us to scan, copy, print. Remember? So a network diagram like this is showing me what my library or my network is going to look like. Then they go on to describing what is a WAN and then into directory services network. And then I go through and I look at the advantages, disadvantages of the directory services network. And then I need to make recommendations at a later stage, which one is going to be suitable to my network environment. Is it going to be client server or is it going to be directory services network? So this gives me an outline now of what I need, what kind of information I need to include in client server networking versus directory services networking. So the question is saying, describe in detail the network architecture of the solution below. In your description, outline what each architecture will involve. All of that information we saw was covered in chapter four slide. The next question says, identify the servers required for the network solution. Outline each server by explaining its roles and use. Here it says, adequately identified sufficient servers for the network. Explain the role of each server explain its use in the network, and then the minimum requirements for those servers. We saw that in also chapter four slide. Remember earlier in the slides, we came across the different types of servers, and let's go back up here to see what were the different types of servers that they were talking about. So they spoke about network architectures, and then common server types. And you see here, same, in the chapter four slide, they gave us the different types of servers. There's file servers, we're definitely going to need file servers. There's print servers, we're definitely going to need print servers. Messaging servers, to send and receive email. Application servers. So what application are we going to be using? The library system has got an application. So we definitely need an application server. Got it? And then the last one that they described here is your web server. For example, hosting of a website. At college, for example, we've got an intranet. In this media center, they can also have an intranet. And if they're going to have an intranet, what does that mean? In that intranet, they need to have um, registered users. Okay? That's also going to now give us a clue whether we need to have a directory services network. If we go back to the case study, they said only registered users must have access to the resources in the library or to the multimedia center. Now, where are we going to have that database of those users? It's going to be in a directory called Active Directory. Can you see now? Our choice between client server versus Active Directory is going to be more towards Active Directory. Why? Because I need a centralized database of valid users, computers, 
and access requirements. It must all be in a centralized database. Who's going to store that centralized database? It's going to be Active Directory. So there's five different types of servers here, and then an additional server will be your directory, um, your Active Directory server. Okay, so we've given you five here, plus your Active Directory server. What's the next question? Activity three, identify the network services required for the network solution. Outline the protocol, each protocol and its use. So network services, they say is learning unit five. I'm going to go to learn, learning unit, and they told me it was learning unit five. So I'm going to go and click in learning unit five. They've got network services, fundamentals, enterprise network. And so let's go into the first one that speaks about network services. Under network services, what are they covering here? They've got chapter six, basic networking services. And this one is chapter eight of the textbook, implementing basic network services. What else is covered here? Windows Server Configuration, Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. This is all going to be part of my server. This is also Chapter 8 of the prescribed textbook. And I'm going to scroll down. Okay. So I've looked now in Learning Unit 5, what is the content? They spoke about Chapter 8. And... Here, what else do they speak about? Also chapter eight. Here, they also spoke about chapter eight. I'm going to go again to more resources, locate my lecture slides, and I'm going to open chapter eight slides. Now, chapter eight slides is speaking about network servers and services fundamentals. I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to have a look at what are the basic server requirements, file and print, server application. What do I need to take into consideration when I'm installing the servers? There's the common servers that I will find. File and print, DHCP domain controller, that's the one with Active Directory, database server. That's going to be storing what database? The library database. Remember, library needs to have a database. File and print servers, they're talking about in more detail. Server applications, more detail. Network and the perimeter. How to connect my network to the internet. I'll need to have a router. If I'm going to have a web server, I can put it between two routers, and then I can connect to the internet, right? You need to determine whether you need a perimeter network or not. In the case study, they didn't say we're going to be hosting a website that's going to be available externally. So there might be a reason for us to do this, okay? Because there's two site offices. Maybe there is a reason why we want that web server in the perimeter network. Basic network support services, this includes network control and management, DHCP, etc. And I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to have a look at the different network operating systems. Now, this one is a bit outdated. This is saying server 2008. For our purposes, we're going to be using server 2022. Remember, the last part is about we need to actually set up and implement this network. Using our virtual computers, we're going to install a server 20 computer, and we'll have a client computer, and we'll need to set up this network um, in the last part of the POE. Exploring the features, this is outdated information. So you're going to look at 20 server 2022. You can do some internet research on that. And I'm going to continue to look at the server support, understanding group policy, Macintosh. I'm going to scroll through. 
Unix, Linux, Novell, Netway, virtualization. We are using virtualization technology. So this is relevant to us. Read through the section on virtualization. Heterogeneous network is referring to what? A mixture of network. Traffic flow. Now, there might be a section that speaks about traffic flow here. Going back to my assignment now, I can see network services required for the network solution. Outline each protocol and its role. Identify sufficient network services for the network. Outline each network services explaining its role. Outline each server explaining its use for the network solution. Identify sufficient network protocols for the network as well as outline the roles of each protocol. So there's four different things that we need to describe here. Network services. What were the network services? DNS, DHCP, Active Directory services. Okay, those are examples of network services that we came across. You need to explain and say what is the role of each. What is the role of Active Directory? Maintain a database of user accounts and computer accounts to manage access to the network and security on the network. What was the purpose of DNS? DNS is a domain naming system. It allows me to identify objects in my Active Directory database or computers on the internet. What does it do? It tells me for any IP address, what is the name of that computer or for a name of a computer, what is its IP address? It's like an address book that we use. When I want to phone my friend, I don't know their number. I look at their name and I say call. Same thing on the computer network. I don't know what is the IP address of that computer, but I know the name of that computer. So I'll put in the name of that computer that I'm looking for. That's basically what you are typing in your web browser's address bar. You don't let type in IP addresses. You type in, I want to go to rosebankcollege.co.za. And rosebankcollege.co.za is located on a web server. That web server has an IP address. Who's going to tell me where's that IP address? It's the DNS server that's going to tell me that. When my computers come onto the network, they need to get an IP address. Where do they get an IP address from? They will get it from a server called DHCP. So Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is a server that allows us to set up a pool of IP addresses that, make, that is going to be available to all the client computers on the network. In other words, when a client computer comes on, it will talk to the DHCP server and it will ask the DHCP server, I need an IP address. The DHCP server will say, yes, you can use the following IP address for whatever period of time. So it leases out IP addresses. So I've spoken about this one here, about the role of those network services. Then this one is talking about um, each server, right? Adequately uh, outlined each server. We came across, what did we come across here in this chapter eight? Server placement. We came across file and print services. They're speaking more about the network layout, domain services, placing support services, DHCP servers, etc. So all of this information is covered here. Application servers, email servers, print servers. Okay, 
Those were all of the different types of servers that we covered here. Network protocols now for the network, as well as outline the role and use of each protocol for the network solution. Where is this one covered now, network protocols? So this was network services. Now they are talking about network protocols. I'm going to go back to my learn. And I'm looking for network protocols. There's the network protocols in learning unit three. Can you see that? Okay. So here, if I click on the types of network protocols, this one says the network protocols are covered in chapter three of my prescribed textbook. So I'm going to go and open up the slides for chapter three. And there's the network protocol. There's data link layer protocols, network layer protocols. Identifying the protocols by rule, by SAT, right? So we're going to be using TCP IP as the main protocol. Chapter three. So in chapter three, they are talking about all of the different protocols. I will go through all of the different information that's covered here, familiarizing myself with the different protocols. And then I'm going to need to select protocols that's applicable for my multimedia center. Here, you can select your protocols from here. For TCP IP, we said you are going to be using the mail protocol, SNMP. You're going to be using FTP. You're going to be using TCP. You're going to be using IP. You're going to be using Ethernet, right? So at least these protocols that I've just mentioned, you need to discuss it. Okay, these are the protocols that's going to be used in our network. What's the next part of the question speaking about? Okay, now activity four says, what are the networking? Yes, question. I can't hear you. I am recording this discussion. It will be in the video. Okay? So no need to stop me to ask me to repeat things that I've said already because this is a recording. Activity four, discuss the network media access methods required for the network solution. Outline each network media access method explaining its role and use. The discussion must include the selection of media type, the media installation and connection strategy, and the access methods. In your discussion, also discuss network devices, installation strategy, device connection strategy, and device configuration strategy. Network media. Now, where is this network media discussed? I'm going to go back into learn and I'm looking now for network media. Where does it tell me about network media? This is talking about the role of access and protocols. Network protocols, they give us an activity here. I'm gonna go back to network um, learning unit three, network protocols. Right, there I can see network protocols are in theme one and in C 
theme two, I've got network access methods. So if I look at network access methods now, they are speaking about IEEE 802 standards. If I minimize this, I can see these are the, these are the different standards that I'm going to be using. The ones that I'm going to be using in my scenario is going to be Ethernet, which is 802.3, this one here, CSMACD. And the next one I'm going to be using is which one? Wireless, which is 802.11. Why? Because they said people must be able to come to the lab. They must be able to connect using their smartphone, their laptops, their tablets. Remember they said we're going to have charging stations in the lab and we're going to allow them to bring your own devices. B Y O D. Bring your own devices. So you bring your laptops, you bring your tablets, you bring your uh, smartphones, and you're allowed to connect to the network using Wi Fi. So, what protocols uh, or access methods do I need to have? Ethernet for all of my workstations and Wi Fi, which is 802.11. I will go through and I will look at here as well, it's saying. In chapter three and chapter four of the prescribed book, it's discussed. The LAN access is also described in chapter three and chapter four. There's the TCP IP suite. From here, to repeat the protocols that I said before, we're going to be using F FTP, we're going to be using SMTP, we're going to be using TCP IP, there's TCP, IP, and we're going to be using Ethernet. Okay, these are the protocols that I mentioned previously. Now, chapters three and chapter four. I'm going to go to my slides. There's my chapter three slides. I'll scroll through, and I'm still looking now for the protocol. There's more information about Ethernet protocol. There's more information about TCP protocol. Then they speak about Apple Talk. We are not using Apple Talk in our scenario. Okay. If I look at chapter four slides now, they speak, spoke about all of the different types of servers, enterprise network, peer-to-peer -peer network. I'm going to scroll through. What am I looking for now? I'm looking for CSMA CD, Ethernet, looking for Wi Fi standards. Okay, so there's all of the client server network architectures. I'm going to continue. Directory services, hybrid architectures. Choosing an architecture. Okay, so I didn't find it here. Let me go back to chapter three slide and I'm looking for media access methods. There's it here. So where did I find it? Chapter three. In chapter three, they've got the media access methods. Which ones are we going to be choosing? 802.3. This one here, CSMA CD and Wi Fi. Which one? 802.11. There's more information that's given to me here. 802.3. There's the description of 802.3 that's given to me here. Now, remember, this information is a bit outdated, right? It is, it is true, but it's not including the most updated information. So I'm going to look at my textbook. I'm going to look at the library. I'm going to look at the internet to find more updated information. I use this information and I then update it. So this, this is the first one I'm going to use. The next one I'm going to use is 802.11. Can you see here, they've only got A, B, G, N. We've got 11A, 11AC, 11AX, right? Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. 
they haven't covered it here. You need to do some internet research and get the latest Wi-Fi standard. Okay, the fastest one with longer distances and faster transmission speed. Okay. Going back now to the POE. I've covered here now network media, learning unit five. Okay, media refers to the cables that I'm going to be using. What I was just discussing now was this one here, network access methods. All right, so let me go now and look at network media. Where does it say network media, learning unit five? So I'm going to go into learning unit five on learn. Learning unit, and I'm looking for learning unit five. There's learning unit five. The design and their networking services. Okay. So I'll click on networking services, basic network services. So there's the information about DHCP, file and print services, etc. Okay. Let me go now into network services. Oh, okay. This is chapter eight. Okay, we've done this previously in networking services. Now the media is referring to what? The cables that will be used, okay? So I'm going to be looking for the different types of cables that's going to be used and it's going to be category. It's going to be ethernet cable, category six ethernet cable. If I look back here, network media, learning unit five, lesson, learning outcomes one to three. So this one here is basically speaking about ethernet cable that needs to be used. I'm going to search my material and look at where does it describe the different types of cable. Uh, Let's go back here and have a look at the learning units again. There's it here, network media and devices, learning unit six. Okay, so learning unit six is talking about network media. What chapter is this? So the types of media, there's the types of media here. Theme one. And they're talking about the different types of cable. Where, which chapter? Chapter two of my prescribed textbook. I'm gonna go and open up the slides for chapter two now. And then I can see the standards. And I'm looking for network media now. So I'm going to scroll through, through the slides until I get to network media. There's some connectors that they are talking about here.
What else are they talking about with regards to network media? Let's see. Chapter two of your prescribed textbook. Uh, there's it here, chapter 6 of the prescribed textbook. So let's go to chapter 6. Can you see how I'm going and I'm searching for the information? Where is it found? Okay. I'm looking for the key term and I'm looking where is it in the prescribed material. There's it here, network media and devices, chapter 6. So I'm going to now... Look at the network media and devices. And the one that we're going to be using is not coax, Ethernet, right? But not Ethernet coax. We're going to be using UTP, right? This cable here. So there's the category. We're going to be using category 6 or 6B, one of these here. Okay? So in chapter 6, you will find the media that is going to be used. And based on the information here, you are going to answer that question. Got it? So in this demo, we have discussed part 2 of your NWAR. 5122 PoE activities 1, 2, 4. Activity 5 will be covered in a separate demo.